I am not lying for the president. That is what Rudy Giuliani, personal attorney to President Trump, just told Dana Bash after several days of baffling, contradictory, and hypothetical statements about his client and his ties to Russia. Uh, all of this has more than a few of us asking one key question. What the heck is he doing? Let's rewind. Last Wednesday, Rudy Giuliani talked to Chris Cuomo, where Giuliani pulled this 180 on the all-important topic of collusion. I never said there was no collusion between the campaign or between people in the campaign. Yes, I have, have no idea if there, I have not. I said the you, president of the United States. There is not a single bit of evidence that the president of the United States committed the only crime you could commit here, conspired with the Russians to hack the DNC. Last hit. Problem is, Giuliani did say there was no collusion. And he kept talking because just a couple days later, Robert Mueller's office gave the White House a huge assist publicly disputing this BuzzFeed article that claimed Trump told his former fixer to lie to Congress about that Trump Tower Moscow project. Uh, and again, the special counsel, which hasn't said a word about anything in two years, decided to publicly knock down this report that had some calling for the president to be impeached. Now, after that, you would think Team Trump might just lay low, take the win. Nope. Not Rudy Giuliani. Here he is again on CNN, this time with Jake Tapper. If he had any discussions with him, they'd be about the version of the events that Michael Cohen gave then, which they all believe was true. I believed it was true. I still believe it may be true. But you just acknowledge that President Trump might have talked to him about, about his testimony. And so what if he talked well, to him is about it? Not Hours later, Rudy Giuliani spoke with the New York Times and said Trump told him talks about the Moscow project were, in Trump's words, going on from the day I announced to the day I won. The next day, Rudy walked it back, saying his comments were hypothetical and not based on real conversations with the president. And that brings us to Rudy Giuliani's conversation with The New Yorker, where he declared the BuzzFeed story was false because, plot twist, there are tapes. You can read this, this full exchange here, there on your screen, but let me, let me just throw the Cliff's Notes version on you. How does Rudy Giuliani know the BuzzFeed reporting was wrong? Because he says he listened to the tapes. Well, wait, what tapes? The reporter asks him. Just kidding, I shouldn't have said there were tapes, but Rudy says later, there are tapes, and I've listened to them. They just aren't tapes about Trump Tower Moscow. Okay, got it? Kind of? Joining me now to try to make sense of all of this, Robert Bianchi, former head prosecutor in Morris County, New Jersey, and CNN legal analyst Paul Callen. So, gentlemen, okay, Rudy Giuliani, New Jersey, New York, all your ties for years and years. You know, a lot of people think of Rudy Giuliani, this great mayor of New York City, you know, got the city through 9 11, wrote a book I remember reading you know, years ago on leadership. And now he's the president's lawyer and is apparently on this clarification tour. What's going on? You know, Brooke, as a person who led a prosecutorial agency, we have such respect for prosecutors and what Rudy Giuliani did when he was the United States attorney. He put a lot of bad people in jail. He knows better than this. We would have expected him to be the pinnacle of lawyering, consistent and clear statements so that the public understands what it is that he's saying. And this vacillation and going back and forth and it's just so bizarre and peculiar. It's hurtful to his client. It's hurtful to his reputation. And that's irrespective of what the truth is or isn't. And to me, it just is such a slippery slide from where he was to where he is now and why he even quipping says, this is going to be on my gravestone. I think he even recognizes that. I want to come back to that in just a second. But Paul, just even to me, the, 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 the part in the New Yorker piece about the tapes, no, there weren't tapes. Oh, wait, I did listen to the tapes, but they weren't on that thing. They were on something else. I mean, it, it, you know, it, do you think all of this is strategy? Or is he just going rogue? It can't possibly be strategy because uh, a lawyer, particularly a lawyer for a politician like the president, uh, is trained about messaging and about staying with the message. And there's a message about a criminal case. Once you decide, or a criminal investigation, once you decide how to handle the defense that you're going to articulate for your client, you stay with that. You don't change the story repeatedly. Why? Because it makes you look like an idiot and it also makes your client look like a liar. I think that Giuliani has morphed into Professor Richard Corey. Now, I don't know if you remember him, but he was a stand-up comic in the late 60s whose shtick was he would speak in total confusion. He would sound like a professor, uh, but that was the way he operated. And every time Giuliani opens his mouth, he causes more and more confusion about the case. It's really astounding. 
You mentioned the grave site. And by the way, it's Irwin Corey. Not Irwin, Richard sorry, Corey. you're yes. predating me. I was born in the 70s. Okay. Um, Irwin Corey. <laughs> Richard Corey's in another song, okay. but not, not uh, um, Professor. The New Yorker interview, you mentioned the, the gravestone. So Rudy Giuliani was asked about his legacy, and so he tells he tells CNN he was joking. That, that's the, the clarification since this came out, that he was joking when he said he worried his gravestone might read, he lied for Trump. Giuliani said his focus is on, quote, making sure the president is on terra firma legally and trying to understand the political waters. Do you think his comments are more for Congress, maybe the Republicans, as this it, whole it program doesn't, moves forward? It, Brooke, it doesn't make a difference. The fact of the matter is, is that he keeps changing the goalposts. And I'm going to tell you why. The question should be, as a prosecutor, this is how I'll be looking at it. Why did Michael Cohen lie to Congress about these conversations with the Trump Moscow having ended in June? There's a reason for that. They were concerned about that because it goes to potential collusion, It dispute, and that's a legal issue. It goes to the president saying he had no business dealings to the public, and that's a, just a public perception reason. But they felt it was important enough to take the step to lie to Congress about it. And now what's happening is they're changing the goalpost. Maybe it was October. Maybe it was November. Maybe it was afterwards. Maybe it was beforehand because more evidence is coming out to show that their previous statements were inaccurate. If this were in a court of law, Paul, you know this. A prosecutor, the reporters aren't even cross-examining Giuliani and he's all over the place. But why if he is were, he all over the place? Shouldn't they have all this zipped up from Mueller and all the... the, 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 the they're changing the, the story as the evidence comes out to contradict contradict their previous story. That is what a judge would say at the end of the case. If the statements are inconsistent and it's not an innocent inconsistency, you can assume that there's a reason they're covering it up and could use that as motive as to why they're lying and they may be lying in order to cover up that relationship. So the more texts that come out, the more witnesses like Cohen that comes out, the more data that comes out that disputes a previous account, well, now we got to move the goalposts. But, but, here's, but here's the thing I think that's the most astounding. Giuliani and other lawyers for the president were involved in submitting answers to Mueller on behalf of the president. That's what I'm saying. Why wouldn't so, their version so of facts already be out there would, and done? And you would they... be locked into that version yes. completely. Instead, you have Giuliani saying, well, the president said this, the president said that, and then Giuliani says, well, I was only talking hypothetically. Yeah. Well, how do you talk hypothetically about conversations you've had with the president of the United States? How often do lawyers speak hypothetically? Th that's a Brooke, great point. And to Paul's point a moment ago, if you're going to go out into the court of public opinion, and there are reasons sometimes for lawyers to do it, you button those facts down so that they're unassailable, that they cannot be attacked, so that there's confidence in what it is that you're saying. And if you don't do that, okay. all you're doing is putting your client more pearl because those statements Can could be potentially be used as adoptive admissions. They're missing buttons. Bob and Paul, thank you guys. <laughs> thank Good you. Good to see you all.